everyone. Thanks for joining in for the session today. I had a hard time getting started with using Streams API in Java. Probably one of the reasons was that I was already working with Java before it was introduced. And it was kind of difficult to understand the new kind of thinking that was introduced with it. So in this session, I'll distill that for you. And today I talk about getting started with the Java Streams API. Why you need them? Because it's very important to understand whether you need them and if yes, why, what you can do with them and how you can use them in your applications. And before we get into that, I would like you to answer a simple question. How would you request for a glass of water? I can think about two ways. Let's say I could share that I want a glass of water by a simple statement, like please get me a glass of water. Or I could define how I wanted in um, using quite a lot of details, like please walk towards the door, open if it's closed, and um, other steps as you can see on the screen. So what is different in both these answer and how does it impact how you request that glass of water and how you proceed from there. So the first statement uh, or the request is a declarative style of programming where you're only concerned with what you want rather than how you want it. A very good example would be uh, the SQL statements that uh, you might have written, um, like select star from EMP. You let your database uh, get the values to you without getting into the details of how the database does it. The second approach is an imperative style of programming where you are not only concerned about the, out, uh, the output that you get, but also about the steps or the process that is followed to get that output. Is either of these approaches right or wrong? No, not really. That really depends on what you're trying to do because this was one of the questions that really bogged me for quite a long time because when I started reading about functional programming or the streams API in Java, I kind of uh, reduced that uh, imperative programming is ugly. No, it, it is not. That really depends on what you are doing. For example, if so now we're taking a step back and we're trying to understand where you should be using each of these uh, styles. For the first one, where I'm talking about the declarative style, if I can trust the other person to get me a glass of water that I can drink, yes, I would like to delegate uh, the work to the person. So that's where the declarative style comes in. It decouples me from going into the implementation details. So if the person tries to kind of uh, rework the implementation, uh, implementation details, excellent, good for the person, for me. The process could be improved without me being affected. So that's one of the beauty of the functional programming style or the declarative style. Uh, but imperative style, probably I don't trust the other person to get me a glass of water, which I think I could drink. Or perhaps I'm the person who's getting that glass of water. So I need to know the exact details and uh, I cannot probably delegate further. Okay, now coming back to what streams are not. Uh, it's important to understand both the aspects, what streams are and what they're not. They are not a place for you to store your data. That's what collections are used for. Collections, files, databases, your cloud, everything else gets, uh, can store your data, but not the streams. Then why would you need them? So they help you to process your data. Let's talk about a quick example. So this could be one of the collection objects that you might use to store, let's say, uh, your colored walls. It could be set, list, map, array. You could also have uh, other data sources like a file or a database, as I mentioned. So let's uh, get on to our editor and let's live code some of these 
requirements which you might have in your project every day. We are, let's say we are talking about having a set of values in your collection object like a list and then uh, which contains let's say uh, uh, balls of different colors. One of the very regular requirement could be filter them and have just a few of the balls in the other list which meet a particular criteria. In this case, it could be a green ball. Uh, sorting or regrouping is another common thing that we do every day. And of course, output the values, not so common, but yes, when we are trying to test it. So that's, I would say, one of the common uh, requirements that we have. So let me hop on to my um, IDE and let's see. So I'm using IntelliJ IDEA for uh, the demonstrations. So let me create a new class in the package ball. I say insert and let me create a class, let's say ball. And in this class, I want to, because I want something to represent the color of the ball, I would say ball color and okay. So this is the field that I want to use because this is doesn't exist. Let me quickly create that one. Okay. And uh, let me have just a couple of colors because we don't want to kind of spend the whole session creating colors. So we have green, uh, we have blue and let's say we have red. That's it. I think that should be good enough. Now let's go back and I say it the ball has a radius and the ball has weight. I think we are good with creating uh, just um, three fields for this class. Let me move forward and insert some constructors. And let's say I want to insert getters and setters. And I also want to insert the equals and I want to insert the hash code method or no hash code is already done now I'm inserting the two string method okay so let me just add spaces out here because I want the values when they are printed they should be nice spaced okay and uh, if you have any questions regarding the shortcuts or the features that i'm using you would see a black rectangle flash towards the bottom of my screen that would display uh, either the shortcut or the feature that i would be using in the ide okay so now we have our class ball and let me go back and see what are we supposed to do so first of all we are supposed to create a list of all the green balls okay so let me uh, say create another class. I say process collections. Okay. And in this class, let me create a main method. I say I have a list of ball and let me call that balls. And I say uh, list of colored balls. So I already had uh, this code snippet written because I didn't really want to invest a lot of time writing this code because that would be repetitive and not so interesting to watch. Okay, so now what do we want to do? Let me go back to my presentation. So the first one is that I want to create a list of all the green balls. Okay, so create a list of green balls okay and this example we would be working with the, the requirements without using the streams api so <clears throat> i say list of ball then i say these are the green balls then what do i do okay i say this is new analyst and i say okay then if you don't have the stream API, how do you get each element from uh, a collection? You use the external iterator. Of course, uh, in Java, you can access the iterator and you can 
iterate on the collection objects using that. So let's say I say if for every ball in so for every ball what do I want to do? I want to add the ball from this collection to the green balls list only if it's the, uh, only if the color is green. So, so I say if b dot get ball color is equal to green then I want to add it to my list of green balls and I say add okay so this is b and this is done okay so we have a list of green balls because this is an uh, uh, external iterator it would iterate through all the balls that i have in the list green balls and then it would get me uh, then it would add the ones which are green in color to the list which is green balls okay so far so good let's see what do we have to do now sort them on the radius perfect so I cannot sort the balls before I have uh, the complete final list. So let me say sort the balls on the radius. I'm entering the, uh, the, the mini tasks that I am doing now as comments so that it's easier for us to understand what are we working on. Okay, so I say collections dot sort then what do i want to sort i want to sort the green balls and i want a new comparator because of course i cannot sort on uh, the I, I don't have any natural uh, order for a ball because this is unlike a string it's in um, uh, instance of a class so i have to define what is the order on which I would like to sort it and as you would know compare would uh, expect a value negative if the first value is smaller zero if they are equal and one if the second value is greater so let me delete this one and I say return o one dot get radius is less than o2 dot get radius if this is right then i want to return once else i want to check that again i say o1 dot get radius is equal to o2 dot get radius and if yes i want to return zero else i want to return okay zero or i want to return one so we are done with the sorting so let's see what's the next step which is output the values okay so we we'll say output the values now how do we do it this is simple i can copy this and instead of printing sorry instead of having a condition i could say just print the values for me okay so let's see if this gets us the value that we wanted okay so i should see green green and 12 and 87 in that order so let's see how it does yes and um this is not working okay so probably i'm printing it should be green balls and not the balls right so i was printing the values from uh, the initial list and not the one that we created which is the green balls so let's see do we get the right values now yes we do so the ball is green and the radius is uh, 12 and 87 which is sorted uh, according to the uh, the comparator that we assigned okay so when you have the red 
backgrounds let's see what replacements do we have here okay okay so this is how you can make your code concise so again now let me do the same thing without using um, with using the string api so how can we do that so let's say i want to create a new java class i say process using streams okay now i have the main method and now let me quickly copy this one i have my list of values and then i want to copy the tasks as well now this is the sorting part and output the values so now we are going to do all of these three tasks as uh, part of the streams api so let me get started and i can say balls dot stream and uh, if you remember i mentioned initially that you can get a stream uh, from a collection object so in this case balls is a collection object and uh, the stream method would get you a stream of values from the balls collection object in this case this is a list uh, we could use a stream or we can call stream method on multiple other type of collection objects so so we've, uh, now what are we going to do we have to get the green balls and that means we have to filter the values in the stream so the next method that i can call is filter and the filter takes a value of type predicate we'll come to these interfaces later so let's say um, i'm going to write a predicate now i would i'm saying if the filter function gets an instance of ball it should return or it should retain if ball dot get color is equal to green now i've done the filtering part now i say sorted and of course i would need a comparator i would uh, in this case i would say comparator dot comparing and then i would say i want to compare this given an instance of ball i want to compare it on its radius again what is left we've already sorted the value using this we have filtered the value using this method now what remains is output the values so uh, it also says create a list so let me say uh, collect okay and i say i want to collect it to uh, green balls okay so now i have a list which is this which is green balls and what this list has is from the original stream which was called on balls which had all kind of balls it uses the filter method it uses the sorted method and it uses the collect method and these methods are grouped into they are uh, grouped into categories like your source your intermediate operations and your terminal operations and we'll uh, i'll talk more about it uh, in a bit later let's print out the values let me say for i say green balls dot for each then i could say given a ball i want it to be printed 
let's see if this works as we want it to okay so we have the result for this one as well uh, now we are talking about output the way we uh, had for the class when we did not use the collection api so now let me go back i have a screenshot of both these classes let me compare them because um, then it would be easier okay so let's compare the code snippets so this is how you can compare uh, of course the one uh, the code on the left which did not use the streams api uh, is a bit longer it's not so concise if you compare it to the code on the right so yes this is much more concise i deliberately use uh, the name of the parameters like ball but if you work with the uh, any other code which uses uh, apis uh, streams api you would see single letter parameter like v or e most commonly i used ball specifically so that it's easier for anyone reading the code to understand that i'm referring to a ball of course we can also replace this with method references but that's uh, something which i don't want to touch in this session